And that brings us to this point. Back at home, obviously. I don't usually film indoors, but this is a process that I figure some of you are going to want to see. Alright, so let's have a look at what I put in the boat. Oh, by the way, this is a sea cruiser right here. Have yourselves a quick look. A nice little cabin area, battery tray release area. And let me tell you, take the lid off, all I smell is burnt motor. Craig. <laughs> no worries, it was bound to be coming out anyways. This will be going to Eugene, he needs it for a project he's got. Servo that I put in. And all I did was link up to the original. I think I said all this earlier, but just recapping. What's going to be going on with this boat? This is a nice, good, solid plastic hull. It's going to be really easy to work with this. Uh, cutting, placing, gluing things to uh, until I have an ultimate decision of where I want it. And then it'll be epoxying because epoxy is way stronger than hot glue, right? Hot glue is only temporary. You see me use it a lot, like right here, but it holds up pretty good. You keep an eye on it. It can fail though, whereas epoxy won't let you down. Some guys will put a nice wood lining in the boat or you know, like a wooden tray to mount everything to, which is even more secure. When you see me build my big hydroplane boat, you're gonna see me do a little more proper install. I'm just learning. This is tankering. This is how you do it. This is how you learn. Oh, what do you think of the flag, eh? Haha. <laughs> Anyhow. Let's get to showing you what's going in this boat. So what you're looking at here is the schematics and assembly for the jet drive unit. The very one that you've seen kind of temporarily powering my great big white V-Haul boat. I haven't come up with a name for that yet, but the Walmart Rebuild. What failed in that video was right here, this guy here. And I'm telling you the prop that was in it didn't look like that. It looked like a little toy submarine prop or something. So, yeah, it needed a better prop. Otherwise, the jet drive unit is good. Ignore these numbers. Don't, don't even listen to them. 26 millimeter diameter. You can listen to that number. That's the diameter of the uh, drive housing, I guess you'd call it. The, yeah, the housing. All these pieces back here. This is for your turning. This is an end cap. The end cap actually isn't present here. These are all the parts. So here's the housing, still in good shape, the only problem is bits of silicone and getting the silicone off. I tried alcohol, uh, short of scrubbing it with, a dish, with dish soap and a scrubber. Do try and remove all that if you ever have to reinstall this in anything, as that's going to prevent you from getting a good seal, especially if you're only using hot glue. This is the end cap, it goes on the outside of the boat, still has hot glue on it because I only wanted to temporarily seal it when I was retesting the new impeller fan that I'm going to show you guys I tried to make in a minute. The end thruster, the, the nozzle, turns, kind of focuses your thrust down a touch and, you know, helps you get around them corners and trust me, like it really does help throw the back of the boat. It's really neat. And this is the alternative to just using that nozzle if you want to have reverse on your boat. This little unit comes in pieces, you have to assemble it, and it's not very hard to do at all. So what happens is your thrust is now coming through this instead of this. And when you hit that third channel to open it up, boom! See that little piece in the middle that comes up? redirects your thrust down and back under the boat giving you reverse propulsion. That is a cool little unit right there. The only other one I'd like to see is the one that Mike Finnegan has on the back of his jet boat where instead of having the thrust come straight out the back or down around underneath it has the thrust come out the side so you can bring those RPM up and then just dump it and it opens up and lets you just launch. It's pretty cool. And of course the only other pieces, oh yeah, I guess this grate here, I had to kind of bend it to match the V hull of the Walmart boat. Still good, still reusable. And the impeller shaft. It is a little chewed up from me working with it, trying to get, oh wow, not going to focus, eh? 
trying to make a prop because banggood.com, which is where I got all this lovely hardware, does not supply a replacement prop. This will be actually my third or fourth attempt at this prop to get enough pitch out of these blades to actually push water. Can you guess what I made it out of? I'm going to tell you anyways. This was a washer. A 25 millimeter washer, that's right, perfect size because the tubing's 26. I actually shaved it down probably another millimeter on all the way around just to make sure it wasn't going to be scratching the housing if an imbalance occurred. And then that is a set screw collar. So you put it on the shaft and you can lock it in place. And it is pressure fit in there right now. And then I'm going to, because this is, you see how it's all scratched up. I'm going to try mounting it with, you got it, JB Weld, liquid metal. It's held before for testing, so it doesn't hurt to try, right? So hopefully this will all be in this the next time you see it. I'm going to go ahead and start removing all this stuff here, which won't be hard to do at all. So being that, I'm going to have to remove this drive system here. Get a little more on the light, you can see it better. And that rudder, that's all got to come off. And if you look inside of the boat, right in here, it's all, you know, like it doesn't have any misshapenness, so there's not going to be any kind of hole to fill. Just the hole where the shaft itself goes through, and I'm going to be saving this. Alright, so let's put this down. I'm going to get to work. Next time you see this, it's going to be all empty, and then I'm going to explain to you where I'm going to start with the jet drive. So with a snap of the fingers, let's try this one. And like that, everything is out. Yeah, right, if only it was that easy. So now that everything's out, we can kind of see what we really need to remove to be able to put this in. Obviously not all the way back. Let's get you a closer look. It's like it was meant to have this little unit in here though. I mean, it lines right up with these tabs so nice. And even by the time I move it back, I can still use them kind of as guides. But there's not a lot of space gonna have to be, you know, dealt with in there. Remove this. Remove that, well, that's have to remove this and then I can place this unit in here. Mark the holes. I'll be able to slide it all the way back, so I'll be able to mark the back here. And then we get to the less forgiving part, and like measure ten times, and hopefully only ever have to cut once. And what I'm also going to try and do when I do my cut, I'm going to try and cut those pieces out as one. So that if I ever have to revert this back to a prop driven boat instead of a, a jet drive, I'll have those pieces I can put in an epoxy or JB Weld or whatever it in. After all, Jeep. Once I get everything removed that needs to be out of the way and I mark it all, I'm going to show you guys and then we'll go ahead with cutting. Well, I'll go ahead with cutting. Not the easiest task in the world to do, but not exactly impossible. But also notice, and this is something we're going to have to work with in the install, there's a gap. Tiny little gap. Because the transom is on a slight angle back. But I do believe we're going to be able to work with that. Not impossible. Next step, cutting this all out. And I'm going to show you guys that once I get to that point. Progress. Well, sort of. I actually didn't really count on this angle part of the transom being a big issue. But in order for this part of the thruster and the outer part of the thruster to properly match up, the angle would have threw it all off. So I had to section this, left the bottom of it intact. And you see how there's that space there? There's that much angle difference. If I want that thruster point in the right way, this is a necessary step. And I figured, rather than having the thruster pointing slightly down and having to fill a massive gap all the way around, three sides of it, it's better to do it this way. I'm lacking epoxy because it's deemed not essential in Ontario right now at the dollar store, I had to make do with JB Weld. 
JB Weld is just epoxy. I probably said that before, but this is a different day for me. Same video for you guys. So now this, and you look at the holes. I had a heck of a time trying to line the holes up. I gotta figure out some kind of gimmick or a trick. But, otherwise, it's a nice flush fit. This piece here, um, just for demonstration purposes, fits upside down, but that little hose for your water pickup tube I need to drill a tiny hole here, which is the plan. Gonna remove just a little bit of that, drill the tiny hole, mount this, and then seal that. Otherwise, it's almost in, it's almost ready. Next step for me is gonna be the worst step of all. Putting a thick, thick bead of silicone, and I mean thick bead of silicone, around any of these mating surfaces, put it all together, hands get covered in silicone every time no matter how careful I am but we want that sealed up really really good and then I'll let it dry for about 24 hours after that once it's in you know the deal you guys will get your update oh and one more very cool important thing I must share with you guys and I told you guys that the impeller fan uh, well, we'll just call it a prop to simplify it had self-destructed under brushless power because they sent inferior components in a pretty good little product like this housing the nozzles so everything works is great but the friggin propeller they sent me was no good well i have a buddy who's getting really good with his 3d printing skills and look what he made me isn't that just gorgeous it doesn't have the dog drive piece in it but that's fine because i'm just going to pressure fit it make a way for it to lock stable on there i'll work on that when the time comes but let me throw these two together and I'll show you what a great fit this really is. Would you have a look at that? A 25 millimeter fan because the housing is 26 millimeter is an oddball when you're looking for replacement fans. I'll give you that warning right now. But like look, no scrapage, no nothing. Great, great work Greg. This is so awesome. I have a feeling it's going to perform better than it did before with this. I can't wait to give it a shot. So, on with the assembly. All right, the last time you guys seen this, was still all apart. Since then, I've actually tested and gotten rid of and reinstalled a brushless system. It went 3S, folks. Well, it's 3S capable by all means, but we're gonna be testing it out on 2S because I know you all want to see jet pump in action, jet drive on an older boat, but I love the hull. It's a leak, it doesn't leak, it's, I'd like to say leak proof, but we don't quite know exactly. We'll find out. Got the reverse unit on. I'm not a huge fan of how much this particular unit limits the turning capability. With the other thruster unit they have on there, like just the end cap, you get a lot more turning. But this has got reverse, and I want to show you guys just how nifty it is. It's just about ready, but we got to cross over. Craig's already halfway over. We're going to go use that nice calm area to test over there. And then we're going to start having some fun. Now we got some rapids. We can go down and come back up. Hopefully nobody goes swimming today. Let's go. Dalewood. Damn. Dalewood. Damn. Look at that. Damn. All that scuzz. You think that's all I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. so yummy. I'm going to avoid that area. Right. I can't move any further than this. Oh, no, wait. I can't. This is the main trail over right here. Yeah. We're going across. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, I'm going to go this way. Yeah, ready to move right up. What? You yeah. stopping here? This, I would say that this would be the main, the thickest, yeah. thickest water. I think this will be worth a try if you can get the bow to start coming up and just... Yeah. So I can stand right here and get your pictures. Ooh, that was Whoa, careful, some of the rocks, some of the rocks are loose. <laughs> Once you're past those, though, it's not too bad. Can't be afraid to get your feet a little bit wet, right? In the name of boating, 
Whoa. Yep, feet are getting wet. Hang on. What are you doing? No. <laughs> I'm not going to tear the boat open there and stuff. I want to get over here. So we can be over there. You got her. I should I should have had the camera pointing that way. All right, guys. We got her all powered up. Transmitter's on. Batteries that are in it suck. Steering is good. See that? It's even trying to push it on land. And reverse. Bam, 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 bam. That's awesome. Maiden voyage with the brushless. That's just like idle right there. <laughs> okay. Look how it slices the front on yeah. the front. That's neat. Okay, we'll bring it back here a little bit. And reverse. And reverse. Oh, it puts a lot of water up and over the back, though, eh? Nice turn. Okay, let's check some temperatures out. <laughs> I like it. Everything seems to be okay temperature wise. Now I guess it's time to play around near some rapids. Never done this before, so. Too rocky. Yeah. Hang on. No problem. Wow, it hooks. That's full tilt right now. On 2S though. That's okay. That's actually, it's not, a, it's like the big boat speed. And it gets up on plane too, right? Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Wonder what's going on. Maybe you gotta keep it fed? Nope. Thought that was the issue. I've seen a lot of air. Oh, uh, gunk. No problem. A little bit of a list to one way. Oh, I think we still got something jammed up around there. Okay. So there's a chance the set screw might have come loose. We don't quite know though. So. Well, that seems fine. Just try those rapids over there. <laughs> I'd rather be over there with it. Okay, maybe uh, float the boat over here for a minute. Yeah, whatever floats I'll your boat. I'll my uh, bag and we'll walk over there. Whatever boat you float. Look at that, I'm not even giving it any throttle at this moment. There we go, a little shot of throttle. Hang on, okay, I'm all right. It's just too much seaweed and grass on it to be able to get up there. 
It's not like the big boat, so you can just launch over it. But I know there's some more rapids down here we'll go look at. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't go out of range or nothing, eh? Oh, like nothing. We lost Prime for a minute. So that must mean there's a little drop or something there. Ooh, sharp turns. Oh, yeah, I hear it. All right, so after checking one 2S battery run, things were a little bit warm, but not so warm that we can't keep running it. So we're gonna try another 2S, and if things aren't badly warm, then uh, we may even try the 3S, but that could be bad because it's a lot more heat in the 3S. Cooling system's working, just not as efficient as we'd hope it would be. So let's put her in here and hope nothing bad happens, right? Off we go. Whoa, there's a big rock right there. <laughs> I'm not giving her full throttle because I want to keep the temperatures down a little bit. I think this turn is wicked, man. I, I love it. Turning area fun. There's your full throttle. See if you can circle this rock when you come back. Nice. Of course, your turning radius, like if you just give her a little bit like this and you're turning, it's just, you know. It's average, but since you start giving her more. Wow. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's like a give or turn. Nitrous! Turbo! Wee! Too much turbo. Oh, it gets on its own wake and it got it lost prime in the pump. Yep, it did it again. I got something. Now I, got, I probably said it before, but the prop I'm running right now, guys, is it's really wicked. I'm pretty sure I've shown it. Hopefully I've shown it at least once. Greg made this for me. He 3D printed it, and he did such an amazing job at it, too. Yeah, there's not much water coming out of that coolant tube at all. So that's one little mod I know I can make to it. Oop. Rock. We just tossed the Barbie out of the boat. <laughs> that's where you put in that clip. Okay, let's check some temperatures. It's a quick temperature check shows us the motor is pretty hot. I can only hold my hand on here for a couple seconds. And I gotta remember, I do have this thing kind of balanced in here. Like, uh, I, I sturdied it up with hot glue just to keep it real, you know? Too bad you guys don't have feel of vision. You could feel how hot it is. Yeah, now the ESC is pretty warm, so maybe we'll let it cool down before we run 3S. I'm gonna take her back out now and run the rest of this one down a bit, though maybe take it easy on it. I wish I knew why that not getting a lot of cooling from it. I know how I can get more pressure in the cooling system. There's a problem with the cable where when I go it's not. Yeah. Okay. Amazing backup feature. Andy built. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> 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 
Maneuvers. That guy getting dragged from something. Yeah, I'm probably that's what probably be the only time you see the reverse unit on this boat. Because it's not honestly that great. I'm not supposed to be full ripping it. I want to try not to overheat anything. I'm that hull, that hull creates a huge wake. I think we're still pretty tail heavy too. But then again, I'm always comparing to the best to the best boat you have, right? Oh. We just oh, hit a rock I didn't even see hard. that rock there. I bet you the camera got that. You see it? See the rock right there, guys? Okay, let's see if we broke any of that. That was a pretty good hit. Not, Not a thing. Mark. Good. Oh, yeah. Dude. I broke one of those protection fins. Oh. Uh, Oopsie. All okay, right. I found that other piece. I didn't even see that rock there. It looked like a shadow. All right. I guess you got to be wary of your location, right? <laughs> uh, not this time. Oh, there's another one. Wow. <laughs> but it's no problem for this guy. He's got this. Oh, I know that noise. And that's it. Yeah. Okay, so here is the new setup after you've seen it rip. I really, really want to run this on 3S. Things got warm, yeah, but the ESC isn't like detrimentally warm. The motor wasn't so warm that it stayed hot forever. This is the current problem. See the gauge of the wires here coming out of the ESC. This is an 85 amp ESC. And then it goes down to these little wires for some reason. To connect to the connector, you and you it's just gauge. Oh yeah, it's like trying to force so much cubic flow of water through a straw, okay. right? After yeah. it's coming out of a sewer pipe so or it's something. Totally gauge wire. It's totally choking it. It's causing these to heat up. I mean, so much that it did that. So the best bet is don't chance it because if one of these lets go, mm -hmm. it could fry this ESC, and I don't want to do that. You know, it ran good. Everything stayed connected, everything stayed butted up, the prop held out. You know, I was on the throttle a lot there. We hit a couple of rocks. You guys want to see what we did? <laughs> Broke one of these little fin guys. Not a big problem. I can Nothing fix severe, that. But... Otherwise, the sea chaser has done pretty wicked. I'm pretty happy with this. They're going to work on this cooling system just a little bit more. There needs to be more flow. And where you tap in on the drive, you can see right ahead of this star point screw, there's a little brass fitting for the hose. And you could take that out and redo the angle of it and then seal it all back up with epoxy so that when water hits it, it's forcing it up and in rather than just catching a little bit under pressure. So there you go. That has been the successful jet drive install, now brushless boat with the wicked hull. Like the, the shape of that hull, like Craig was saying, Planes through the water so nice, and on 3S, and a little bit better balancing, this thing's going to get right up on top of the water. It's a really interesting wake. I know. That's pretty cool. So maybe the next time we take the boat, so we'll have this and the Rockstar boat running. Time will tell. So thanks, y'all, for watching. Don't mind the messy hair, the messy appearance. It's still COVID here in Ontario, and we're having a tough time finding the different things to do. Thinking of a hike sometime this weekend, get out, check out a few more areas for you guys, share them with you. I know there's that Archie Bunker or Archie something trail we gotta go to. <laughs> Archie Bunker trail. Archie something. There's some stuff in Elmer, but we've been avoiding Elmer because of all the stuff to do with that Church of God and all the things going on. Yes, that's our neighboring town. If you're not from around this area watching the vlogs, that's happening in the next town over to us. We're not even gonna get into that. It's just a mess. 
Thanks for watching guys. Like, share, and subscribe. Help these videos get to views. Help the channel grow. We'll see you real soon.